Hey guys, back for another episode. So today is going to be the first part in a new series. All you guys who are into DIY projects, I think you're going to really like this one. So let's get started. Some of you have probably seen these auto curing or auto drying products on the market. There's a big company called AutoCure that has, you know, products for commercial use and it helps basically regulate the drying and curing process by giving some automation to it. So I was thinking, is there any way that a home scale grower can make a DIY version of that for a reasonably low cost that has basically the same functions or similar? Okay, so with that in mind, let's try to come up with a logical design for what we will call an auto dryer slash cure. And the reason we couldn't make both in one, I think. So let's just start real simple. What is the actual goals for this project? So like I was saying before, we need something that will allow to control, give us ability to control the environment in which we dry. And of course we want it to be a fairly easy build and inexpensive. So let's go ahead and just start with the main things, which I would say are the functions of this design. Sorry for the shaking this by the way. Number one is going to be to what measure, but also regulate. We want to have that control, right? Humidity. That's the most critical thing I would say for the drying process. We can also split that up further because what we need it to do is to be able to increase the humidity to maintain it and or to decrease it, right? Simple enough. And why not also do the same thing where we'll measure and regulate temperature. <laughs> Sorry, sometimes I start writing through the camera and uh, that never goes well. And with that, it's the same stuff as we have here. Increase, maintain, and decrease. And finally, let's include that favorite concept of permaculture design, which is relinquished control. And all that basically means in this case is some sort of automation. All right, so there's the three functions that we're going to start with for this design. And let's move on to the knowns. So what factors do we know about these functions that we can put down right now? So number one, humidity. Well, we know that the relative humidity Usually people say somewhere 55 to 65 percent, at least for the finished flower, right? So I think that could be a starting point there. And that covers like, you know, the 62 percent range that those um, humidity control packs use. And by the way, quickly. Relative humidity is defined as the amount of water vapor present in a gas, so air, divided by the saturation limit. So what I mean by that is the maximum amount of water that that gas can hold at that certain temperature. So the amount present divided by the total possible times 100. So both of these top and bottom numbers can change to affect the relative humidity. 
So just keep that in mind. For example, if the air temperature drops, then the saturation limit of that air also goes down. The colder the uh, air temperature, the less moisture can be in it. Think about like winters and continental climates, really dry, gets super cold. And compared to more Mediterranean coastal climates where the air stays wet, it stays warmer throughout the year and cooler in the summer, so there's less of that swing. And of course you can change the amount of moisture present without changing the saturation limit to also affect the relative humidity. So second, the temperature, I mean, I really don't know. Let's say 60 to 70 degrees Fahrenheit sounds pretty reasonable to me. Not too high, not too low to avoid chances of mold. So yeah, that's basically the two factors. And I'm going to go ahead and throw that third one in that there's this property that as you increase, so that's what I mean by this up arrow, as you increase the relative humidity, that has the effect of decreasing the density. That's what that symbol is. Of the air. Uh, in other words, we can write this same thing out in words. The wetter the air, the lighter it is. And again, by wetter, I'm specifically talking about this relative humidity number. So kind of a concept there that doesn't always seem obvious, but that is true. So that's something I think we'll use in our design here. So let's just go ahead and do that now. What do we need to consider? Again, we can just start with these same parameters. Start with humidity. And what did we say we need the functions to be? Increase, maintain, and decrease. Okay, so we need some way to increase it, to maintain it, and to decrease it. So let's see. Well, to increase the humidity, of course, you can use a humidifier. And I'm thinking of a general design that could apply to any scale. So you can apply this to a, I don't know, warehouse or one of those shipping units that seem to be pretty popular nowadays. The equipment you use and the setup will be different, but in, as far as the design, it's all exactly the same. So in a larger setup, you would use a humidifier or maybe you would just add moisture somehow with wet whatever but since we're drying flour there we can get moisture from the flour itself right that's the whole point we're trying to extract that moisture in a controlled manner so I'm gonna go ahead and think about a way to do it just passively the with increase of humidity resulting from moisture coming from the flower. Okay, so I think we can check that off. So what about maintaining the relative humidity? Well, again, you could uh, seal up the shipping container or whatever chamber you want to use. That should do the trick to keep it at a constant humidity. So we want something that's going to be close to airtight. But now that, that we have this requirement, we're going to have to think about airflow control. OK. I think that's satisfactory. And finally, we want to decrease it 
Well, uh, back to that air control, I guess we'll have to have an exhaust. Right? Again, depending on the scale you're working on, you could also maybe use a desiccant. Whoops. <laughs> I think for my design, I'm just going to use a fan that's going to pull in ambient air. So that's another important thing to consider is if you're not using a, and of course a, a dehumidifier would work here as well for larger scale. But I think I'm just going to try it with an exhaust fan. Our ambient is, you know, pretty high, 45 to 50. But as long as it's lower than the range that you want to try in, it should work. And of course, if your relative humidity is higher than this, and uh, whether you do an auto dryer or not, you're going to have to reduce that humidity one way or another. Okay, so that's actually most of the design there, but let's consider the other parameters here. So we have temperature. And again, we need to increase it, maintain it, and decrease it. And I'm just going to go ahead and say we're going to use the ambient temperature here as well. You know, this is kind of in the range where I usually keep my apartment at anyway, so that should be fine. And of course you could add heaters, ACs, whatever. Uh, just consider how you're going to perform these three functions for your particular design if you do this. And finally, our third function was some automation. And that's going to be the most important part, really. And I'm going to do that using a humidity meter, so sensor, with a controller to functionalize the exhaust fan. And that's it. There's basically only three parts to this. A seal chamber, flour for drying, obviously. <laughs> and an exhaust fan with a controller to maintain the relative humidity in the range you want. And of course this comes down to what recipe do you use? What range of humidity do you set it? Do you go from 55, 65, I don't know, 59 to 63, narrow, wide, uh, how long you do that for until you move to more of a curing stage and what you do the humidity for that. There's lots of uh, unknowns here, but the way that I kind of see it working, if we consider a graph here of the relative humidity over time, and here we have, I don't know why I drew the negative, RH, and let's say we program it to go from 65 to 50, initially, just to make sure we get a good bit of moisture out to start with. So the way you can think of that is on the controller, this would be the set point. And we could get to this upper limit by having the differential, that delta value you set on those controllers as 15%. That way it will fluctuate between these numbers. So what you'd kind of expect to happen is it would, you know, be put the flower in and, oh, sorry, the other way, put the flower in and your humidity spikes after you close the lid. Of course, once you cross this barrier, your fan turns on and that should try this down. And then once you get to 50, your fan will go off. And again, the ambient moisture will dry that up and it will basically cycle between these two numbers 
And let's see, what would eventually happen? The difference between the drawing and the wedding step would change, right? Or would, it, would they just get closer together? I don't know, I guess we'll see. But I think what would happen is that initially it would, it would be really quick to dry because there's lots of humidity in all of that surface area of that flower. So it'd be very quick to wet, sorry, and it would take a long time to dry. So I think this is what actually it would start off looking as. And then eventually after some days, it would take long to wet and it would be very quick to dry because there's no, not much moisture on the surface left. Yeah, so I think this is the pattern that we'll kind of look for. And then eventually we'll hit some point where it'll take a certain amount of time. I have no idea what this is. And then we'll switch to a curing mode where we'll probably narrow down the range to, I don't know, like 61 to 63. But yeah, there's obviously lots of recipes to consider. You can do what I described here and just have a constant range throughout the drying process. You can set it to have a variable range. So initially, Maybe this differential goes down lower or the, sorry, the set point starts lower and then it gradually goes up as the drying progresses or whatever you can think of. I don't know. It's kind of a unexplored region, I think at the moment. All right, guys, that's going to do it for today. I got my little checklist of the things I need to get to start this project. Let me know what you think down in the comments. I'm really excited to get this going. I got a bunch of this uh, greenhouse harvest coming in. And for me, it seems that the drying process is kind of the limiting factor. Uh, you know, once in a while, it just comes out not so great, a bit too much of the hay smell. And there's just too many variables just hanging it up in a room, I think, without any control. So I think if we shrink down the volume that we need to control in the chamber that will really kind of help things out. And at that point, you know, it's just down to the recipe and there shouldn't be any real unknowns as far as getting a good quality product. And of course, spending so much time growing and training and trimming and harvesting and all that stuff only to have something go wrong at the last step of drying or curing, that is the worst. I'm sure you guys know that. And I see a lot of people asking questions about what's the ideal humidity and temperature to dry at. And that kind of tells me that, you know, other people probably having some similar issues. Or if you're not, you know, why not build something that you can just set it and forget it. All right, guys, thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one. Keep on growing.